the top of the hour. Welcome to TechSoup and welcome to how to use GrantStation tool. I'm a big fan of GrantStation. I use the GrantStation tools all the time. So you're going to be learning so much today. And as Jeremy said earlier, this is going to be recorded and you're going to get the recording. My name is Aretha Simons. Let me show you how you can engage today. Um, Jeremy has lots of team members here. Uh, they're going to be answering your questions in the Q&A. So feel free to put them in the Q&A. And you can also put them in the chat as well. If you learn something cool today, which I know you will, share it on your social media and make sure you tag TechSoup. If you need the closed caption, go ahead and tap on the CC button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. I'm just going to make one quick announcement and then I'm going to get out of your way. I don't know if you have heard of Quad. Quad is something new here in TechSoup and I'm so excited to share this with you. I'm going to put a link in the chat so you can you know, get some more insights about Quad a little later. And also you're going to get the slide so you'll be able to click on their hyperlink. But Quad is a peer-to-peer -peer community that we've set aside just for TechSoup members who join Quad. Again, I'm going to put the link in there in just a moment. But you're here about grant sessions, so let me get ready to turn this over to Jeremy Smith. He's the Director of Communication and Technology, and he wears a lot more hats at TechSoup. No, excuse me, at TechSoup at GrantStation. So you're going to hear that as he's speaking. He's going to share with you a little bit more about him as he gets into his presentation. Welcome, Jeremy. Thanks for being here. Oh, thanks a lot, Aretha. I am now going to take over the entire presentation by uh, sharing my screen here in just a second. And uh, then you will be able to see what we will be doing today. And the big thing is taking a look at everything that we have here at Grand Station. So can someone do me a favor? Once they see it, type in the chat that they can see grandstation.com. Um, I can't move until someone puts something in the chat to say that. Okay, great. Excellent. Now we can actually officially begin today's webinar. So hello, welcome to this tour going over all the tools and features GrantStation has that you can have full access to. Again, my name is Jeremy Smith. I'm the uh, Director of Communications Technology, and I host all of our online uh, education offerings, and I conduct some of our tours, and I also handle a lot of our internal and external tech and communication issues. But joining me today and who you'll be hearing from and who you'll be talking to is Carrie Glauser. She is my partner in crime and our senior research specialist here at Grand Station, and Kevin Peters. He's our vice president of research. So we have two experts who know all about finding grants and how to use Grand Station here and ready to answer any questions you have. As Aretha said, the best way to ask us a question is to type it into the Q&A section, then we can track it and we'll go ahead and answer at the end of the session if we need to. We'll also mark it. I mean, you may put the question in and you're like, why haven't you answered yet? The only reason why is we're saving it. So we can go ahead and ask, answer it for everybody at the very end of the session. Chat's a great spot to go ahead and talk back and forth, maybe even ask a question, but the best way for us to answer it, put it in the Q&A section. We'll be happy to answer it that way. So before we begin, I want to tell you a little bit about what we're going to be doing today. We're going to provide you an overview of all of our features, along with a look at how you can find funders on our website. Now, please feel free to ask any questions as they come in. Kevin loves questions. And in fact, the more complicated, the better. So make it really tricky. Kevin will love that. So put those in the Q&A section and then we can keep him busy all of today's webinar. So let me start off by telling you a little bit about what GrantStation is. Now, we feature a set of searchable databases that are filled with current grant opportunities. We also provide tools and tutorials on grant seeking and writing. And we also keep you up to date on the latest philanthropic trends. So in short, a GrantStation membership helps you find funding opportunities, helps you build a strong grant seeking program, and helps you write powerful proposals so you can win awards to fund your mission. Now, one thing that differentiates us from other databases and services is our policy of only listing active funders. I'm going to slow down on this part right here. These are funders who are only accepting unsolicited applications, letters of inquiry, or some other sort of unsolicited communication. This means you won't find people who only give to one organization. You won't find people who only give to Jeremy Smith on Wednesdays. You will find people who give to various people without requiring a direct invitation from them. 
Now, another thing that our memberships include is not only technically advanced tools that I'll be showing you today, but also handcrafted funder profiles with that human touch, that human touch from Carrie and Kevin and all of our researchers. Our research team updates and adds content on a daily basis. So you know that you're seeing only the latest available information. Now, this is how you know that you're getting sort of a hot list of funding sources that have been vetted by our researchers and are actively accepting requests. I'm really, I'm really hitting on that part today. Think of us as your personal backroom research team, pre-screening funders. We're feeding you the most relevant ones for your program or project. So without any further ado, well, look at this, $99 for Grand Station. That's February 13th and 14th. You'll be saving over $600 off a Grand Station membership. But you may be asking yourself, Jeremy, is it really worth $99? Well, let's find out. We'll spend the next hour and we'll go over everything your station has to offer. And maybe it's the right fit for you. So let's turn to the process of finding funding for an organization. How do you go about identifying the best grant makers to approach? An important part of your membership and one of our biggest tools here at Grant Station is our dashboard feature. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up here quickly. And we'll give you sort of an overview of some of these sections. And we're going to go through all the different features and tools we have on our website. But we'll start here at the dashboard area. So when you're getting ready to um, sort of prepare your research, we encourage anyone looking for funding to do a little preparation just before you really dive in. So looking at your dashboard, this is where you can do a lot of that sort of initial step. And we're going to take a look right now at our project section. And again, we'll go over all these other sections in a second. But we're going to start with projects. So <clears throat> what we're going to do here is this is going to allow you to be more effective and efficient in your research. So here we are in our dashboard and here we are in our project. So I went ahead and made a project and that's our animal welfare project. I'm gonna go ahead and edit this and show you what the project looks like. The reason why you make a project is if you make a project and you enter in specific keywords and interests and areas of interest and location, you'll receive email updates that will let you know when something new has been added to our database. So if you do this step, you will be able to receive lots of different new funding opportunities emailed directly to you. So this is why I really recommend people use the project feature, if for no other reason than just to get those email updates. So here's a scenario that we'll use for today's webinar. So we have a project that focuses on expanding pet adoption, humane education, spaying and neutering, and animal cruelty interventions. Now, some of the animals that our organization works with are rehabilitated and trained as emotional support animals for seniors at independent and assisted living centers in the community. So starting off here, under project, we have a description. This is where we start in by just putting in some basic information. It doesn't have to be fancy. This description is a high level overview of what you're gonna do with your project. So this tab right here, statement of need, this is what's gonna be used to identify keywords to guide your specific research. And this is where you can see specific information about what we're doing, emotional support animals or ESAs. These are all things that you create and add in here. And this is really just to sort of spark your memory and spark your mind as you're figuring out what you need funding for and for what specific reason. That's your statement of need. Then you have your budget section right here. This is where you're going to want to itemize your budget needs. You can include brand names when possible, as this can really help you identify specific product donations as well. So once this is complete, you can really start thinking about the geographic scope of your project. And if you click up here, you can see next to project details is geographic scope. This is what we're going to figure out where we need funding for. So our project is working within and throughout Pennsylvania. And again, to make sure we receive those custom alerts based on our project information, we went ahead and chose North America. We're also including all the U.S. and then specifically in Pennsylvania. But you can do this for anywhere you're at including, as uh, I know someone said, Canada as well. So you can break it down to a specific province that you're working in. Or if you are doing work outside the U.S. and Canada, maybe you are working across borders. Maybe you're doing something with South America or Africa or somewhere in Europe. This is where you can add in that geographic scope. So again, if anything new is added to our database that fits within the parameters, you will be given an email alert so you know when something new is coming out.
So down here to geographic focus, this is where you can add in a specific focus, such as a, a neighborhood, a city, or a county where your work is being performed. This will really come in handy as well. If you need to narrow it down, maybe you have too many results, you can narrow it down to funders who give within your specific region or your county or your borough or whatnot. So next is the real fun part, and this is our specific areas of interest. So if I go ahead and click on this one right here, we can sort of start about start talking about the idea of search terms. So occasionally when you're doing a search for, you know, any kind of uh, specific type of funding, I'll go ahead and click on this one right here. Occasionally a search won't yield any practical results. And often that's caused by not having the right search term. So our search terms um, really contain descriptions of that key terminology that's used on our website, and it's the exact same terminology used by the grant makers themselves. And this really serves as a great guide when doing your keyword research. So Carrie, since I'm going to be tapping you periodically throughout today's webinar, give me the exact down to the number count <laughs> of how many areas of interest we have right now listed. Oh, no. Well, I don't have an exact one, but I know oh, okay, it's okay. It, it kind of fluctuates a bit. It's around 230 or so, and that's inclusive of uh, types of support. So like if you're looking for general operating or capacity building, things like that. OK, thank you, Carrie. I could not couldn't couldn't stump her today. I'll try it again next time. So to use this specific area, you would enter in a keyword to see which categories you want to check when you're searching, then make a note of this in your projects tab. And now you know you're on the same page as the grant maker. This is also a really great way to uh, make sure you are on the, uh, the proper page to begin with. For instance, and this is, a, this is a little specific thing to Alaska and I'm based in Alaska. Instead of, them, instead of calling them snowmobiles, we call them snow machines. That's a, a very Alaskan thing to do. So if I went ahead and did a keyword search for snow machines, it may not pull up anything or what it will probably do is say, oh, you mean snowmobiles because that's what the rest of the world calls it, not just people in Alaska. There's lots of people who would type in something. For instance, I'm looking for, I, I do outreach therapy with children who, um, and we have horses. So I use it for horse therapy. Horse therapy is not there, but equine therapy is. This is how you can get on that same page as the funder. So I'm going to jump back to our projects tab here, and you can see some of the things that we have selected. We select environment and animals, a general category. We have animal welfare selected. We also have animal assisted therapy and service dogs. And then also we have mental health because this is something that we could use for seniors and help with their overall well-being by bringing them a dog that's an assisted therapy or a service dog. This is where you're going to want to think strategically about your project and the impact it will make. So a thing that... Um, we haven't taken a look at yet is our target populations. This is another thing unique to GrantStation. You can narrow down your searches based on what type of population you want to support. So again, say you're focusing on children and youth, or maybe you're focusing just on folks who are low income, maybe just veterans or military affairs, or in this case, we're focusing on seniors and the aging. And if you see these little eyes right here, all these eyes give you a quick little breakdown of what's included within a given category. This is true for all of our varied search terms. So if you're not sure what's included, if you hover over that little eye icon, it will then let you know what's included as part of that specific target population or search category. So next thing we have here is our types of support. And this is where you can narrow down funding again, even further based on specific needs. So we're looking for um, equipment. We're also looking for money for general operating support. Maybe we need some product donations. Also, you know, we could send some people away and get some training, you know? So here's some, we're looking for money for training programs. And again, these are all available. You can hover over them to learn more specifically about the type of support and also see what we have available. And there's a lots of different options here. Maybe you're a new organization and you just need to sort of get up and running while well, you could get some project program support or maybe even product planning to get everything up and going or startup funding for that matter. All of these various boxes you check will then help narrow you down to the right type of funding for your specific need. So 
We're going to move back to the top here and show you one last area. And this is the keyword section. This is where you can enter in any other specific term that doesn't relate to what we've gone over yet. Again, this is just for your reference. So it's here. So you can come back at a later date. Hey, I'm going to do a search using this specific keyword. And that's the best way to uh, make sure that you don't forget that you use that. So now that we've identified sort of the most relevant search terms, we're ready to dive into doing research using our searchable databases. And we always encourage grant seekers to start their research by looking at government funding sources. And that's because these sources can often provide most, if not all, the funding that you need. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this right here. Yep, that's fine. I don't need to save all those different things. And if we move up here to the top of the top of our website, you can always click our logo. It takes you back to the home page of the site. But the navigation bar is right over here. And clicking on Find Grant Makers shows you all of our various databases. And we're going to start by taking a look at uh, what's available in our U.S. government and U.S. federal section. And let's go ahead and start by taking a look at our U.S. state government section. And looking in this section, we can see a breakdown of all the various states. And then you would go ahead and click on your specific state. In our case, it's Pennsylvania. And then from here, we'll go ahead and uh, just take a look at what we have listed here. Now, this section of our website provides members with a listing of agencies that provide support in the form of grants, loans, contracts, technical assistance, and more. Now, you've chosen your state. And again, our focus is um, based in Pennsylvania. So we are here in Pennsylvania, and we can see all the different categories of funding available throughout the Commonwealth. And in many cases, you may not find specific funding that will work, but sometimes you might. This whole section is something that we update on a regular basis, and it gives you direct links to all the funding available within a given state's um, agency or, you know, public organization of some sort. So this is where you can find links to the Fish and Boat Commission, Archery and Schools, and then again, you can save all of these directly to your dashboard as well. There's lots of funding that's often available on the state-based level that goes overlooked. Um, so federal will give you money that can possibly support your entire program, but those are often very involved applications and for very specific reasons. State gives you a little bit wider range. It's focused on just giving within your state, and this is everything that your state is currently offering support for. So another thing I want to show you, also under Find Grant Makers, is our federal database. I'll go ahead and open that one up right now. Now, this is a front end to grants.gov. If you ever used grants.gov before, it can be a little tricky trying to locate various types of federal funding opportunities. But in this section, you can search by eligible applicants, specific areas of interest, the funding agency, you can enter in specific keywords. You can also, also search by the funding opportunity number or the CFDA number as well. And I'll just show you really quickly what this looks like, because this gives you an overview of how all of our searches work on the site. You can, of course, save anything to your dashboard at any given time. You can sort by the opportunity title by simply clicking this. Also, you can sort by agency if you'd like. And you can see when it was posted and when they'll be closing the specific federal opportunity. Now, all this information does not contain your actual application. This gives you direct links to submitting your application within the grants.gov website. But this is a way that you can do all your research, find the funding that's a good fit for you, write your grant application, and then once you have that all together, go to grants.gov to submit that. And again, this is just for federal-based funding. If you're looking for federal-based funding, we have that covered with our U.S. federal database here. Now, the information in both of these sections is really great information to collect because when you apply to private funders, you can say that you've done your federal and state research, which you can do right here on GrantStation. And in case you don't find any options, you can say at this time, there are no federal or state programs that can help us with our need. That way, the private funder knows that you've done your homework, which really speaks to your credibility as an organization. And that private funding is really the only option for you right now. So the next thing that you can do is if you can see here, we have our fine grant makers heading. And then below that, we have links to all of our databases. You can also access these through the Find Grant Makers link. Notice there's lots of ways to get around. So I may be jumping between different areas, but that's just to show you all the different ways you can move. So right now, let's move into US Charitable, and I'm going to tag in Carrie and have her walk you through this section. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Jeremy. 
So the U.S. Charitable Giving Database has thousands of funder profiles, and it includes uh, independent, family, community, and corporate foundations. There's corporate giving programs, faith-based grant makers. Uh, we have giving circles and even associations with grant making programs. And then we even have some funders that are just listed as other sources. So the profiles are searchable by geographic scope, by areas of interest, types of support, by the funder's name, and by keywords. In the content area on the left of this page here, you'll find a brief guide that'll help you through the search process. And then on the right-hand side is the navigation area where you can enter your own search criteria. So under geographic scope there, you can choose to search for global grant makers giving to US organizations, which will increase your collection of options. But for now, let's click on Pennsylvania, which Jeremy mentioned earlier for a search scenario. Okay, and then let's choose national grant makers. So that gives us 2,162 results to work with. So as each criteria is added or subtracted here, it will broaden or narrow the funding opportunities that are being displayed. This initial process of choosing our geographic scope allows us to cast our search net as wide as possible, combining national opportunities with state-based ones to really see just how many funders might be able to support our need. And then once we start selecting other criteria, our results will begin to narrow to funding opportunities that are hopefully a more perfect fit for our needs. And if you want more information on how the search operates, you can click on the learn more button right there and that will give you a brief description. And with that, I think we're ready to select our area of interest from the earlier search scenario, which I believe was animal welfare. And you can find that under environment and animals. And that is the third button there. So if we add that to our search criteria, that brings us to 138 results. So that's narrowing that down now. Uh, let's add another criteria to this search scenario. How about from types of support? And let's say that we're looking for general operating support, which is a very common one. Okay, so if we add that, that narrows us down to 41 results, which is much easier to work with. And if you want to narrow this search even more, we can remove national from the geographic scope that we chose earlier by clicking the minus button that's right next to USA and then focus on those funders that specifically given Pennsylvania. So now we're left with 17 results. And then just real quick, I'd like to point out the keyword search, which is at the bottom of this page here. I think Jeremy mentioned it briefly earlier. Um, while that's a powerful way to narrow your searches, say you're looking for funding for a specific county or borough, we suggest that you exercise caution when using that so that you don't narrow your searches down too much. Remember that the keywords that you enter may not necessarily be the words that the funders would use. So if we scroll back up here and look at this list, you can see that there's been a couple of things done periodically. We have things that have been saved, things that have been unsaved. And you can also see a breakdown of the information like I showed you on the federal page. You can, again, sort it by grant maker name, but you can also see the geographic scope and geographic focus. So the scope is where they're giving specifically within what state or what country or, or whatnot. And then the focus is that further breakdown that goes into the more nuanced location. So, for instance, the Britain Family Foundation gives across Pennsylvania, but they have a focus within the Erie location. Bucks County Foundation, interestingly enough, sends the focus on Bucks County. So it's just a way to know at a glance if that's a good fit. You'd want to find something, if you're doing something, say, in Pittsburgh, the Double Eagle Foundation primarily supports in the Pittsburgh area. That's a good one to start with. But let's take a look at the Neil Martin Christensen Foundation. Because in this case, they don't have a specific focus, but they are their scope is specifically within Pennsylvania. So I'll go ahead and click this link, and now we'll see what an actual record looks like here on Grand Station. So this one's already been saved to our dashboard, and you can see that it has been saved specifically to our dashboard. It's, in fact, it's been saved to my plan, another tool we'll talk about in just a second. But let's look at this profiles in, in more detail. So we can see that this foundation has an area of interest that includes education and animal welfare. 
and the type of support they include is project, general support, building funds, and equipment. We can see that application procedures require you to request them directly from the foundation. We can see their content information right here. We can see the financial information, which includes their giving and grant range, uh, what type of application it is, uh, what type of grant maker it is, what their EIN number is. You can even view their 990 form. We'll talk more about that on ProPublica, which is a breakdown of what they've reported to the U.S. government. And then you can see when this particular profile was last updated. And a lot of profiles like this one in particular, um, this is one that doesn't necessarily have a website. And if it did, it would have a link up here to a website or any kind of social media or whatnot. And if it doesn't have this information, this means you would be contacting directly through this contact information right here. Now, you may say, well, if it's not online, what's the point? Well, there's a good chance that this is a funder that you haven't heard of before. This is a funder that you may not necessarily have thought of being a source for funding. And all you need to do is go ahead and request the information using their contact information right here. So this is a great way to find funding that might not necessarily be on the beaten path. And that's what you'll find on GrantStation. Everything you'll find is currently active and accepting unsolicited requests for information. That's the key. I'm going to keep hitting that today. And as you can see right up here, you can go ahead and save and unsave this one. Right now, we can just unsave it. We can also mark this as NA. In case this one was not a good fit for us, we'll go ahead and mark it as NA. Then when it shows up, we'll know not to look at it any closer. You can also print the profile and then email it as well. So right now, this is a good chance to go ahead and move into the dashboard and really take a look at how this this area works. And now, Carrie mentioned the dashboard a little bit. I showed it to you. Let's actually go through it. And we're going to keep in mind there are Neil Martin Christensen Foundation. This is the one that we'll be following through. So the Neil Martin Christensen Foundation will be our guide. Well, not really. Carrie will be our guide through our dashboard. So let me open that up. And Carrie, I'll let you take the reins again. Okay, sounds great. So here we are back in the uh, main area of the dashboard here. And so um, as we talked about earlier, you can develop project descriptions, you can save your search criteria, you can save individual funders, and you can even track the status of your application process all through your own custom dashboard. So I'm going to have Jeremy pull up each of the sections in here so that you can get an idea of what to expect when you're working in here on your own. So I believe we covered the project section a bit earlier. Let's go to the saved criteria tab and have a look around. You can select some search criteria and then name and save your search when you're doing searches. Once that's in your dashboard, you can click the name you gave it to rerun that search. This allows you to remember those terms that were most effective in finding funders for your programs so that you can run them again in the future to see if any new opportunities are now available. Okay, so now let's go to the Saved Grantmakers tab right there in the middle. When you're looking at Grantmakers in the searches, you'll see that you can save a funder to your dashboard, either from your list of results or from the profile like Jeremy showed us. So this tab here shows you all those Grantmakers that you've saved to your dashboard. You can see their name, the project you've assigned it to, the priority you've assigned it, their application deadlines, if they have any, and then any specific notes that you might need to make. Um, also in this section of the dash dashboard, there's something called the decision matrix right in the middle there. Um, the decision matrix is a tool that'll help you prioritize your leads so that you're focusing on those with the likeliest possibility of success and hopefully the least amount of effort. The key is to figure out the potential return on the investment of writing a proposal and then managing the award. Um, Jeremy, would you like to show us a little bit about that if possible? Yeah, no problem. So I'm going to quickly go into one of these just to show you what it looks like. Here's the Neil Bard Christian Foundation, as I showed you before. Remember, we had those projects. Well, we went ahead and selected this and added to the specific project. But this is a note that's come up before. You can have an unlimited number of projects. So if you happen to be a grant researcher or maybe you're a freelance grant writer, you can create projects for each of your clients. And then you can sort them and arrange them as needed. You can also create projects, and I encourage you to do that, for everything you need funding for. We need funding for a vehicle. We need funding for um, salaries. We need funding to keep the lights on. You can do projects for each one and then apply specific funders directly to those projects. So you can have this project with multiple funders 
is just something to keep in mind that you can do. And it's a request that came in that we added into this database. So it's pretty straightforward, just like Carrie said, but the trick here is the decision matrix. This is a really powerful tool that we have, and it's really easy to use. You really start off by answering some basic questions, and then going through these and answering the questions really gives you a sense of how appropriate it is for your specific need. Starting off with mandatory criteria, do we meet their eligibility requirements, which is very important. If you answer no to that, then you probably shouldn't apply to that funder. And is the funding consistent with our mission? Is that a yes or no? If you answer yes to both of these, you can go on to the rest of the questions. And this is where we get into our scored criteria. Three is most favorable, zero is least favorable. What are their priorities? Do Are we in their geographic giving area? Do we serve their target population? If you don't know what these terms mean, you simply click this link and it brings you to a page that explains what these terms mean and how you would use them when you're using the decision matrix. So does the funder provide the type of support needed? Oh, they definitely do. So we'll go ahead and add them up to a three. What's our credibility with the funder? We don't really know them that well, so we'll probably put that at a zero. Do we have the subject matter expertise for the project? Oh, definitely. We've been doing this for three years. We know all about dogs and, and how they can interact with seniors as well. Do we have support from the board and staff? Oh, definitely. Yeah, they're, they're all in on this. So as you can see, you simply go through and add in basically zero to three, answering these various questions. And then at the very end, you're going to get a number. And that number will determine if you should, you know, what you should really do. And we have three levels. Uh, if it's zero to 15 points, to consider dropping them from their list. If it's 16 to 30 points, they could be backup funders for you. And if it's 31 and above, you know, get going those applications. It's a good fit. It's a good match for you. Side note, if you are a grant writer, you may have dealt with this. Someone comes up to you and says, hey, I found a great grant. You should apply for it. Now, I'm not a grant writer, but I know that that can be kind of annoying because you'll be like, yeah, well, I, I have these grants I'm already working on. I can't just write a grant today because I'm working on other grants. You can say, great. Thanks for the enthusiasm. Let's run it through the matrix. Let's see if it's a good fit. And I'll show you how you can do that with your own funder, even if it's not listed in GrantStation. There's a way you can do that. And we added that as well. Let's go ahead and save our changes and see what our number is at. So if we go down to Neil Martin Christian Foundation, we see they're currently at a 33. That's a great number. We should probably get started looking at them. And with that, let's move forward, Carrie. All right. Thanks for that. So let's go to the uh, My Plan section of the dashboard there. So the My Plan section is a list of those grant opportunities that you've saved for kind of a visual overview of the dates that you need to monitor so that you can stay on track of your grant application submissions. You can track the progress of each opportunity, which allows you to take your research and then move it into action. So let's go into one of these plans and have a look around. How about the Neil Martin Christensen Foundation? Oh, okay. well, what a coincidence, it's right here. Yeah, <laughs> all right, so we have the name of the funder, uh, which project this funder fits, the priority of the application, the status, such as LOI has been submitted or um, your application has been approved, the amount of the request below that, and multiple date fields that will keep you on track when working on your own applications. So think of the My Plan section as your grant central station, if you will, of keeping a visual look at the comings and goings of your grants. On the main My Plan page, you can export dates to your calendar software or you can export all of the data as a CSV file for use in your favorite spreadsheet program. I know we all have a favorite. And you can export data from your various dashboard sections at any time as well. And uh, just a final note about the dashboard, we're always adding and incorporating members' feedback, so new features may appear at any time. Now, you can have uh, multiple grant makers saved to your dashboard section, and especially you can have specific grant makers saved to the My Plan area as well. But let's say you have a funder that you work with, only do it once a year, and maybe you're one of those people who are zero inbox. I don't know if you ever heard of that, but that's people who don't like having anything in their email inbox. Basically, they 
plan their work day based on what's in their email inbox. So you may only want the things you're working on actively available right here. Well, you can actually archive a specific project and then you can pull it back up. So if you have a funder that you only work with in January, you can go ahead and archive it and then pull it right back out again. And what's great is when you pull it back out, it's automatically updated with any new information that our researchers have done with that particular funder over the year. That's one of the nice things about GrantStation. Once you've found something that's a good fit for you, you can always archive it. You can see I've archived this one multiple times to our specific process. So this is how you can add your own specific, have your own specific archive, but also you can add your very own grant maker, like I said earlier. It's another request that came in. So you click on add your grant maker and then add in all the specific things. Add in the name, what project will you assign it to, what's your priority and your status, your amount, all the specific information you need. And then you can track it all through your grant station dashboard, then you can export the data anytime as well. So you have full access to everything that you make and always have full access to it and can take it out at any point. You can also filter specifically by projects. So again, if you are a um, grant writer and you have multiple clients, you can actually sort by a specific project and pull all the grant makers that fit that specific project as well. Also, I want to show you a couple more things that you have here in the My Plan section. You do have the report section. We'll talk about that in just a second. That's where you have all the different reports that you can do here on GrantStation and some of our interactive tools. But you can also have the Pathfinder right here. And Pathfinder is a source of various information. We'll talk more about it in just a second. But you can save all the information you find in Pathfinder right here to your dashboard as well. Also, if you've purchased any courses here, we have lots of online courses available, including including one that allows you to turbocharge your grant seeking, which is sort of the soup to nuts approach of how to write a grant, how to find funding and everything we're talking about today. We have a full course. You can access that right through here. And then any orders you've made as well, anything you purchased through GrantStation as far as webinars and whatnot. And then my profile is where you can go in and change your password, your username, your email address, all your different preferences. They can all be done through the profile location. So with that said, let's go back to our search and in fact, let's go to our save criteria right now and let's go ahead and run this one, product donation, animal welfare. So again, I went through, I created a search profile, even added to a specific project. Let me go ahead and click on run. So when I run this search, you can see it's searching within the US and Pennsylvania. The specific area of interest is animal welfare and the type of support is a product donation. So looking down this list, let's go ahead and see what we can find here. And uh, we've got three, <laughs> and that's the nice thing. We've narrowed it down by adding in these specific areas of interest. We can always remove one. So say we removed USA, we would have even fewer. But since we're looking across all of USA and Pennsylvania, we're looking at three specific results. And these are three that specifically focus on product donations to an animal welfare area of interest. Now let's take a look at the Purina Corporate Giving Program. Now, they, we've saved this one to our dashboard. There's a specific reason why. Even though they don't specifically mention Pennsylvania and they don't specifically say anything about giving – well, actually, they about giving in our area. So they give in Allentown and Mechanicsburg, but we're not in Allentown or Mechanicsburg. So that's for their specific you know, support that they provide. But they do provide product donations. And for product donations, the company provides uh, – well, donates products to pet welfare organizations throughout the country. So they may not provide funding, but they will provide a product donation. So this is a really good one to, to look into. It's something that could have been – we found this when we were writing out our budget, looking at Purina as one. That's why we encourage people to go through that section – Add in that data, it'll often spawn or spurn on an idea to do some more research and find another source of funding that may have been overlooked. So in addition to our U.S.-based grantmaker listings, we also have three other unique areas I want to show you that you can search through. And that's our international and our Canadian charitable databases, along with the Canadian government section. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this one. I'm going to move up here and I'm going to go ahead and click on our international charitable section to start with. Now, within this area, this is where you can find grant listings that are beneficial to U.S.-based nonprofits doing work overseas. So let's say you are doing something with education in Nicaragua, Nicaragua for instance. We'll start by clicking on Latin America. Then we'll add in a specific national grant maker who gives within Nicaragua. 
and then we can add in our specific area of interest. And again, we're, do, we're focusing on education. And this is an interesting thing you can do. The general category often includes general education issues that aren't specific to anything listed below. So if nothing we have really fits with this, choose general. And that'll just give you a breakdown of everything that's not specifically included. Then you can see the breakdown again, it's just like within our U.S. charitable. You can start by grant maker name, see their scope of giving, and see who's eligible to apply. Click on this to get more information about that specific funding opportunity. So taking a look at our Canadian database, because I know we have a Canadian on with us today, it's the exact same focus as before. You start with your province. Um, I do not know where you're based. I should have asked that. I failed in my job as a good tour guide, so I apologize for that. I'm going to pretend you're in British Columbia, though. You may not be there, but I'll pretend you're in British Columbia. So we'll start off by choosing our specific scope. We're going to add a national grant mechanism across all provinces as well. And then we're going to scroll down to our specific area of interest. And again, I failed my job as a tour guide by not picking a specific area of interest from you. But let's say that you're focused on arts, culture, and humanities, and you're doing something involving uh, just sort of the general category. So again, it's going to pull up all the results that fit within that. We're looking at 219 results. We can add in more specific areas of interest. Maybe we only want a certain type of grant maker. We're only looking for corporate foundations, or we're only looking for religious based funders. That's another option that you can do here on GrantStation. Or maybe we're only looking for government-based um, government entities or intergovernmental organizations, or maybe just a giving circle. You can then narrow it down to a specific type of grant maker based on if that's of your interest. So then you can narrow it down even further, take those results from 200, drop it down to 9, 10, or 20. I like having about 10 to 15 personally. And what's great is you can always just remove a specific um, search term by clicking the minus sign, and that will increase your results again. So if you find yourself narrowing out of any results, just remove something, go back and do another quick search, and you can find more. Now, in addition to this one, we also have a heating government section. It functions very similar to a U.S. state government section. You go ahead and start by choosing your specific province you're looking for funding within. And then it's a breakdown of general resources up here that can provide links for your needs statement. And then all the different types of support are listed here on the right-hand side, broken down into those specific categories. Again, these are links taking you directly to all the funding that's available within that specific province. And this is a really great feature that we have not only just for the U.S., but also for Canada. So if you are a Canadian user or Canadian-based or doing work in Canada, Transition has you covered with lots of different funders and funding opportunities listed here. And I also want to show you one other thing. Let me back up here. If you're interested in national opportunities, you can click the national opportunities link here, which gives you a breakdown and links to all the national opportunities available across Canada as well. And again, these are updated. These are researched by our researchers and they're broken down into the various types of support available as well. Because again, federal or government-based funding can often provide a lot of your need. If you are unable to find that, you can then supplement it with anything you find within our various charitable databases. So if we have time, we'll come back and do some more searches at the end of today's webinar. But just to let you know, that's sort of an overview of everything that's available within our search databases. So if we go ahead and click now on our logo, it takes us back to the homepage of our website. Even though we really pride ourselves on loving the playing field through these easy to use, time-saving searches for funders, and these are funders that are actively engaged, taking, what's that? Unsolicited requests for information. That's right, everybody. We also offer in-depth, long-term guides for building your grants program. So not only can you find them, we'll tell you how to write them. We'll start with our build strategy section. And within this area, this is a complete walkthrough of articles that'll help you build a solid grant seeking strategy. So now that you've assembled the list of potential funders, again, this is known as primary research. That's in the lingo, in the know. You're now ready to begin secondary research. This is where you see just how good of a fit all these potential funders are for you. Now, as a part of secondary research, you're going to want to research the grant maker, generate questions to ask to help determine if they're really the best fit for your project. And that's what the build section is all about and how to do that. 
Now you'll find articles explaining the type of web research to do, how the IRS 990 fits into everything, um, how do you work with in-kind gifts? How do you develop a grants program policy? What's a grant seeking team? Why do I need to make one? How do I make my plan? How do I create time? How do I think strategically? Everything you need before you work yourself up too much can all be covered right here in the build section, including some tools, as I mentioned, we're going to take a look at. So we're going to take a look at the R3, which I named. I'm very proud of that. It's the Revenue Review and Report. So it's R3. Go ahead and click on that right now and show you what this is. So the R3 is a really like a basically a breakdown of your grants and your other income sources and lets you visually see where they are and where you're going to go into the future. It takes about 10 minutes of time to go through this. You just need a copy of your operating budget and with the breakdown of any grant awards, sort of the amount and source combined with any grant revenue that you're having that you have coming in. So you enter in specific information. You can enter in your current information. You can enter in what's projected. You can do one or the other or both at the same time. And you enter in specific revenue, like what do you have coming from local business? What's coming from community foundations? What's coming from a giving circle? If you aren't sure what these are, again, click the link. It'll break. Come, it'll pop up a little breakdown of what is included within that specific category. Then you can put in your non-grant revenue. What gifts do you have coming in? What special events do you have? What interest income? What endowment income is coming in? And then you go ahead and run it. And then once you run it, you get that visual representation I told you about. And since those are actually saved in your dashboard, let's go ahead and look at one. So I'll go ahead and click on reports from my dashboard. And we'll look at this one I ran that's combined. And from this, you can see I did it from 2024 to 2024. And this is from 2025 to 2025. You can see my breakdown of information here. And here is my current revenue, with this visual representation next to my projected revenue. Then I have my current grant revenue and my projected grant revenue. Then my current non-grant and my projected grant revenue. This is just really handy for a quick visual representation of what's going. Like we have 29,000 coming in this year, but next year we're gonna have 79,000 coming in. And it's a great way to see what's happening. Show this to your board, show this to your executive director and say, look, this is the, this is the trend we have. We have a lot more money coming in from individuals. It went from 10,000 to $35,000 coming in. And then this is the piece de la resistance. That's my French for the day. Um, these are the recommendations based on the numbers that you've just entered. These are things to do with local businesses. This is what to do with independent foundations. This is what you should do with corporate foundations. This is information about working with giving circles. Based on the numbers you've entered, it will change the recommendations, sort of rules of thumb that come from our years of existence. We've been around since 99. So we have been doing this for a very long time. And the information you find here are things to keep in mind as you go about looking for more revenue and more sources of income. This is uh, the R3 tool. And I really like using this tool because it's, uh, it's a very handy tool. Now, another tool that we have, um, which we can find a link to right here. And that's the benchmarker. Now the benchmarker um, is based on information that's pulled from our annual state of grants you can survey. So it's a resource that can strengthen your ability to secure grant awards by providing a realistic framework for your grant seeking plans and goals. If you like numbers, if you like trends, if you like seeing what's happening in the world of philanthropy, the benchmarker is for you. Um, you can use this along with the R3 to really set those grant program objectives and define how much to pursue and from which types of grant makers. Now, you'll start by putting in two, at least two questions, like what's your budget range, what's your mission focus, and then it'll show you sort of the basic information, or you can really narrow down this report. How old is your organization? Uh, what's your paid staff size? What's your dollar amount? What percentage is coming from grants? What's coming from recurring grants? This allows you to compare yourself to the over 2,000 people who've also taken this survey. And then you can find trends that are happening between the two locations. And that actually leads me very smoothly into our next section, which is the state of grant seeking. Now, this is our annual survey that we provide, and it's really a sort of what's happening within the world of philanthropy. And here's some highlights that come from it. 
Um, compared to the prior year, 58% of respondents applied for more grants and 47% were awarded more grants. In addition, 46% of people reported the receipt of larger awards. Also, if you apply for at least three grant awards, you increase the frequency of winning an award. Only 10% of organizations that submitted three to five applications won no awards. You can also see what the average um, award was. What's the median award? What's all these words from math class you forgot? They're all here within the state of grant seeking. And the benchmarker provides you access to everything within the state of grant seeking. This is a free report you could download today without even being a member of Grant Station. And you can download the key findings, downloading the full report, look at the charts. And then of course you can benchmark and compare it to your specific organization. So if I move back up to the top of the page, I click on write proposals. That's our next great section I wanted to talk about. This is everything else that you need. <laughs> this is where you're going to find step-by-step -step tutorials that shows you how to write a strong proposal from beginning to end, complete with examples, templates, and resources. And members also have access to award-winning proposals to read. And it's really a great idea to read successful grants to really help you develop your proposal writing skills. And this is the place that you're going to find over 50 of them. We have a uh, winning grant proposal competition. We've been running it for almost 10 years now. And from here, I'll just show you what it is. It's a breakdown of various proposals that have all won awards combined into governments-based applications and private-based applications. And these are the ones that won awards, and these are the ones that won our contest, and you have full access to the entire proposal. So you can read the proposal, see what they said. Of course, they remove specific information that may be you know, specific to the organization, but this is where you can see what they did to receive the award. And these are award-winning proposals that go through a very grueling test to find these winners. This is what is currently working in the world of grant seeking. This is why we have this as a feature here at Grant Station. So you can see these proposals and find what's working and maybe use that when you write your proposals as well. And as I mentioned in the right section, again, award-winning proposals, how to get started, what's letter of inquiry, how do you write that? The full grant proposal is everything broken down, soup to nuts, how to get started, what does each section include, how is this reflected, can I reuse various sections, all that information and more is answered within our right proposal section. So the next area, of course we're not done, there's always more here at Grant Station. You can also visit our online education section, which is right here. I'm going to click on live webinars right now. Um, our webinars do not require Grant Station membership and they are not included in your membership but they are available at an affordable cost for individuals or groups to participate in. So all attendees to our webinars receive access, not only the webinar, but also a recording of the entire session, along with any of the presenters notes or handouts after. You can purchase past webinars in case you've missed them and wanna take advantage of our really wide library of resources. Um, if you're looking for a quick dip into a subject, on Mondays, we offer a 30-minute target ed course. This covers a range of topics from building a proposal writing team to a series we're working on right now called How AI Can Be Used as a Tool to Help You Secure Grant Awards. Now, if you're interested in learning on your own schedule, though, we also have multiple web-based learning courses. You can find those also here under online education. We have them under on-demand learning. One I strongly encourage you to take a look at is Turbocharger Grant Writing Skills. It really walks you through the entire course, um, the entire process actually of writing it. And the course itself has videos that go along with interactive quizzes and tests. So you can really judge how you're doing as you're going along. And this is something that we've really spent a lot of time on with our uh, president, Alice Runke. She's a long-term and long-time, actually, grant writer and expert in the field. And this information that you'll find in Turbocharge and in all of our web-based learning courses will really help you if you need to get settled, need to, you're nervous about getting started or making everything work properly. This is something to keep in mind as a really great way to um form a really a solid foundation if you are trying to find funding and you aren't really sure how to go about doing that. This walks you through that entire process. And again, online education is a separate charge from the membership that you would get for $99 through TechSoup, 
but there's lots of opportunities here. And we also offer many free webinars as well, um, including one just like the one you're taking right now. If it is free, you can see it is, is marked by a little free right in front of it. And there's lots of different courses and topics, again, from how to center equity in grant writing to uh, writing capacity building grant proposals and whatnot. Lots of options available here in the online section. So finally, as if there is ever a finally, in our public resources section, this is where you can find links to all of our newsletters. We have three newsletters that go out. The Grand Station Insider goes out weekly, and our Canadian Insider goes out once a month, as well as our International Insider. They all feature multiple funding opportunities and information from the philanthropic world. You can sign up for those really easily right on our homepage of the website or visiting any of these newsletter pages. We also have our Trend Track section. This is where you can find our various articles, such as Tracks of Success, which is a look at what's going on in the world of philanthropy and interviews with various experts from that world, along with the GS Insights blog. In fact, there's one coming up from Kevin in, I think, next week. And you can read about our the findings and what's going on in the world of grant seeking from our members, from our staff, and from volunteer contributors. And finally, you can find that link, as I mentioned earlier, to the state of grant seeking there as well. And one thing I mentioned earlier was a pathfinder. I'm going to show you that in a little bit more detail here. It's really a resource library. That's really going to help you sharpen your skills, grow your career, and follow developments in the nonprofit and philanthropic worlds. You can break it down by specific topics and then what type of format, what you're looking for. And then from there, it'll give you a really long list of opportunities. You can click on them and learn more about them. Some of them are hosted on GrantStation. Some of them are across the web. Some of them have a paid component to them. They aren't through GrantStation. They're through other organizations, like maybe a conference or some sort of workshop setting. But it's all available here. If you're looking for a resource, you can find it for free right here in our Pathfinder section. And finally, if you are a member of GrantStation or if you are a member of a partner member of a partner organization and you have a membership through them, I saw someone mention earlier in the chat they are with Grants um, Grant Professionals Association. You can find information on all of our various partner programs we have here. I believe they're one of our MVP partners that we have. We also have all types of information available about GrantStation available here. If you need multiple copies of a membership, maybe you want one for your whole organization. Everyone needs to have a GrantStation membership, which is great. You can find more information about that. But our focus for today, though, specifically is on the $99 GrantStation special offer. That is on February 13th and 14th. You will save over $600 by taking advantage of this through TechSoup. You need to be a member of TechSoup. This is a great way to get everything I've shown you today and have access to it for a full year. We won't auto charge you. And there's a good chance that you could then renew this again when we team up with TechSoup the following year for the same price. So just letting you know, with that said, I think we can go ahead and turn to questions. Again, thank you for your time and thank you for joining us. But let's do some questions before we leave. I'm sure there's a couple or maybe Kevin handled every single question and we'll say we are done for the day. So Kevin, how are we doing question wise? Yeah, I just want to throw one to Aretha. You answered this earlier, I believe, but there, is there a fee for becoming a TechSoup member? No, there is not. Okay. So yeah, it's a great deal. So $99, there's no additional um, fees on top of that. Now, Jeremy, we got some of the, the greatest hits questions, if you're right. Oh, I love it. the greatest hits questions. Let me go ahead and clean up. I have so many windows open. I'm going to go ahead and clean these up. There we go. Okay, let's do them. I'm ready. Okay. Uh, let's Rub my hands together. Let's talk about uh, Boolean terms. Do mm, you want okay. you, me, or Carrie to handle that? Ooh, let's have you do that. It's been a while, Kevin, since you came up with the you came up with the great terminology for Boolean terms. So get ready to get nerdy, everybody. We're going to talk about Boolean terms and searches. All right. If any of you had a uh, computer programming class back in high school, you probably noticed this. This is what we, we talk about when we're talking about an and versus an or search. So when Jeremy does the geography, that's going to be an or search. So here he has USA and California. That's going to be funders that fund in either the USA or California. We do that to make sure you're not missing out on any opportunities. Obviously, if you're in California, you're also eligible for those nationwide opportunities. However, the other terms you're going to use are what we call an and search. So here, you're only going to get results that meet all 
of the terms you enter. So Jeremy's added education. Let's throw another one in there, Jeremy. Oh, I went a little too quick there. Let's narrow it down even further to a type of grant maker. It's only a giving circle. All right. So here it's going to give you funders that are, why did oh, that? I think it's, it's slowing down a little bit there. Maybe I went too quick for it. Let me go ahead and clear that really quickly. So let's put it back in place. National grant makers, state grant makers, California, and the basis is education. And then let's throw charter schools in there this time. Good idea. Yeah, I was thinking that's a good one to do. It's probably an actual uh, combination. So this is only going to show you funders that have a broader education mandate and specifically say that they have an interest in charter schools. If you're not getting enough results, if you've had, added too many search terms, just back out of a few and that'll help give you a, a larger number. You know, we've had members before say, I've added 12 search terms and I have zero results. Well, that's because you're only going to get those funders that match all 12 of those. And that's going to be um, a tough criteria to match up. Okay, um, Aretha, we're going to throw another one back to you. Um, Grant Station, if you get a membership direct through Grant Station, uh, we don't care if you're a for profit organization, an individual consultant. Aretha, do you have to be a, a nonprofit to join TechSoup itself? You do. You have to be a designated 501c3 organization. Okay, so for those of you folks who aren't associated with a 501c3, you can watch our homepage for other grant station sales throughout the year. So if you're an individual working for a social entrepreneurship organization, um, you can be a member of grant station, just not through TechSoup. Let's see. And oh, someone just asked because you clicked giving circle there, Jeremy. I'm going to throw this one to Carrie. Carrie, what's a giving circle? Oh, thank goodness. I didn't want to have to answer that. Go for it, Carrie. <laughs> um, so yeah, giving circles are generally um, a group of people, um, either specific community-based or, um, for instance, women's giving circles are really popular. <clears throat> Maybe some people that have something in common and they want to get together and just um, give a grant, you know, on a yearly basis. So... Yeah, usually they're um they're very like the Los Angeles giving circle. They're just very community based. Okay, excellent. And then Jeremy, the other greatest hit, I believe this has come up about 20 times over the course of the webinar, people asking, what if we have uh multiple people who want to use the membership within our organization? There's no problem if they're going to be using the same account. So that would be fine because your your grants person logs in with that account and then your executive director logs in with the same account. But you can't log in at the same time. You can just log in separately if you need that kind of access. If you need multiple people to get multiple access to GrantStation, your best bet is to contact us directly to figure that out. But that's beyond the whole process of the TechSoup promotion we're trying to focus on right now. So if you do need to have multiple access, separate access for multiple people, you lose access to, a, there's not really a combined dashboard for multiple people, although that is sort of in our, in our wheelhouse for the future, something we're thinking about doing. But that's immaterial for today. Your best bet is to just use the same account and have different people within your organization access it. Yep. And someone's asking about a specific situation. Um, if like you're a, a person working on uh, two separate projects, I mean, there, there's no need to have, you know, multiple logins if you're one person with two projects you can have, do we have a limit on the number of projects jeremy it's there's no limit on projects just on um saved grant makers in the archive so basically you can have tons of projects and then you can sort them based on whatever you need them to and then you can archive them as i showed you earlier too to get them off your screen if you are a zero inbox person like myself okay cool and the other um membership based thing we've had a ton of people asking about and i know you love answering this one jeremy i'm ready Talk to us about stacking oh stacking oh yeah oh yeah i even mentioned it early on just i think a little prior to we officially beginning but the way grand station works is if you have six months left on your current membership and then you buy 
another year of access, it stacks on top of the current one. Now, it gets a little tricky, though, if you're buying through TechSoup and then buying through something else, then we have to work a little bit more clearly on that. But let's say you bought TechSoup last year at X date, and you buy TechSoup again this year at Y date, it will stack on top of that. So if you bought TechSoup Grand Station Access twice in one year, you would then have that stacked as access. So that's how we do memberships here. We don't like you losing anything. We want you to get the full value out of your membership. We don't want you using Grand Station if it's not a good fit for you. We don't want you to waste your money. And that's why we have this great opportunity for $99 through TechSoup, just because we want people to have an opportunity to use Grand Station, to use TechSoup, and find a great way to find value when they're looking for funding opportunities. Yep. And to put this into concrete terms, Steve was like, I'm already a member of Grand Station. I expire in November. So in Steve's case, if you get the $99 TechSoup deal on February 13th, it'll take you, your current membership will go to November, and then the TechSoup membership starts. So you're good through the following November is what Jeremy means by stacking to use that real world concrete example. Okay. Exactly. Let's go back to some Grant Station uh, focus stuff. A lot of people are asking about like finding those correct search terms. So Jeremy, mm. could you go to that main search terms page? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Ways to make that uh, pretty useful. It's under uh, I... find, grant, find grant makers and then oh. it's, uh, <laughs> down at the bottom there. Thanks. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> okay. So, um, so yeah, the trick here is really just identifying what you need funding for. And that's why we really encourage you to go through that project page to figure out what search terms will work. It's really putting your thoughts down, you know, to paper basically, well, digital, you know, ink, however you want to look at it that way. And it lets you see, oh, this is what I need funding for. I need money. Great. What do you need money for? I need money to keep the lights on. Great. Keep money for the lights on. What is that call? And that's where, you know, learning terminology is handy. And this is where you can put in specific keywords that you think might be what funders fund, but then the keywords will actually lead you to the right specific funding information. So if I go ahead and click on type of support right here, and I'm looking for, you know, just operating expenses, for instance, operating apply. So that would fall under general operating support. It's organizations without specific use of the funds. And this is also known as operating support or unrestricted grants. So just by doing this, you know, oh, okay, I need unrestricted grants then. And I need operating support. These are the types of search terms that I need to look for. That's how this section works. And this is how you can know you're on that same page as the grant maker. So there's a lot of them in this section though. So if I just go ahead and click on that and remove this, you can easily look through this, or if you are a control F fanatic, like I am, you can hit control F and then search through the entire page by adding in those specific search terms and just search everything that we have here. For instance, architecture right here also includes research projects, educational programs, and conservation programs. Arts education includes higher education, K-12 education, and the community at large. This is what's included in each of these main search terms. So this is why it's a good idea to figure out what you need funding for, what are your areas of interest, and then you can start narrowing down to those keywords that work for you. Thanks, Jeremy. And on a very practical level, can you do a control F for historic? Oh, sure. Yeah. Let me um, rearrange Remember my screen here. Historic? Was asking. Yep. Okay. So the way that this is going to be useful once you go back into the database section, so you find out, okay, we do have a search term for historic preservation. If Jeremy scrolls up a bit, you'll see that when we go onto the database, that's going to be nested under community and economic development. So you want to remember when you go to the search page, you hit that expander for community and economic development, and there's historic preservation for you to click. All but right, here's sure. one more thing I'm going to show you before we before we go on. And this is why I like harping on the project page so much. Apologize for this. But if you go to your project page and then you go into your individual project, this is why you should make a project for everything. You go into it. You can do everything I just showed you from right in here. It's all right here. All the same information is available here. 
you can break it down to types of support or in this case, areas of interest broken down to these main areas of interest. So once you find the information, that glossary of search terms, you can search through that in a separate window, come back in here and click that box. And now you know those are the search terms you need to search through. So there's a little thing to add there that you could do it right here in your project page. Excellent. Okay, Carrie, you ready for one? Yeah, sure. All right. So do you want to um, lead us through how we can use that keyword search to find funders for a specific county? Yeah. So let's go back to that area. <laughs> that area, that the area. website search. Okay, Let me so add in California. national. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with uh, Marin County. I'm always Marin like, County? is it Marin or? It's Marin. I, I it's okay, Marin. Marin. Yeah. Let, let's do a search for Marin County in here. And Marin County or just Marin? Which should I type in? How about just Marin? Because sometimes it will have county or counties. So you don't want to miss um, either of those opportunities. So yeah, here we are. Um, here is a list of, you know, very specific uh, counties and areas. So yeah, it can be handy, but also, you know, you could narrow yourself out of opportunities if you're just searching this way. Yep, excellent. And another um, key way to use that keyword search is generally we add the clickable keywords when there's a sort of like to say an accrued mass of funders that meet that term. And generally once there's about 30, 40 plus funders out there uh, hitting on a term, that's when we'll add it. Um, a couple of years ago, we added a suicide prevention term because that finally hit enough funders who were covering that area. However, if you're in a very targeted field where maybe there's not that many funders, that keyword search can also be useful. Um, for example, the one Carrie likes to use. Jeremy, you want to just throw chinchillas into the keyword there? Yeah, sure. With nothing <laughs> else. Let's try that. It might be singular. It might be plural. I'm not and sure. And why would be, I be throwing that term out there? Does anyone we know have a chinchilla? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have a chinchilla. <laughs> There might okay. be one person I'm aware of. So here it's going to bring up the Oxbow Animal Rescue Grant Program because they make food for chinchillas and goats and stuff. Another example is um, we were doing work with an organization that does aquaculture. We don't have that as a search term right now because I believe we only have seven funders in the database targeting aquaculture. Once that hits that critical mass of about 40 then we would add it as a search term. But if you're doing work in a very targeted area, that keyword search can be pretty powerful. And then let's see here. Someone just quickly while I'm looking for the next thing to use was asking, you know, what about capital campaign funders? Hear me, can you just open up that types of support and kind of show what's all available there? And there's quite a few to choose from. I mean, here's just a brief, okay, just capital building funds, no specifics. We've got about you know 19, 1900 results right there. You can then narrow it down specifically, but the type support is a great way to just figure out what do I need money for? I need money for equipment. I need money for this. And again, you can search in any direction, not necessarily how I've shown you. I'm just showing you one way how I like to do it. There's lots of ways you can search. And again, you can add in just a specific type of support to start with, and then add in your area of interest, then add in your location, then add in your target population, add in your keyword and narrow it down accordingly if you want. All right. Now, I do have one last question where I'm gonna really going to put Carrie on the spot. Um, but with that, if we did not get to your uh, question today, I, I hope we got most of them. Feel free to reach out to either GrantStation at info at GrantStation.com or to TechSoup, and we can get you that answer you're looking for. Jeremy will pull that up. And then while he's showing that, Carrie, are you ready for this difficult question? Yes. I know you're prepared for this one. A couple people have asked, what are what are the differences between GrantStation and other unnamed grant search databases that might <laughs> be out there and they might be considering? Yeah. Okay. So I'll just point out um, some of the things that sort of set us apart in the industry. Um, our price, of course. Um, one of our um, marketing slogans is affordable on purpose. So we're very affordable, especially if you can get a sale. 
Um, another important difference is we only have one tier. So if you buy a membership, you get access to everything, everything in the database. There, there's not, you know, a higher tier with different grant opportunities. It's all in one. Um, another important difference that Jeremy pointed out a few times is everything that we have is open for some type of um, letter of inquiry or email or communications. So everything you know, has the hope out there that you can win an award. You're not just cold calling places that may be closed door. Um, another very important thing that sets us apart is um, all of our records are handwritten. They're researched by individual persons. As soon as new information is available, we put it in the record. You'll actually get an email with new deadlines when they're available if you have those um, saved to your dashboard. So yeah, I'm sure I missed something in there, but there, there's a lot. Yeah, the, the other big thing I'd add, Carrie, is you know how helpful the team here at Grant Station is. Um, we have a, a small but very dedicated team. Carrie and I get tons of questions about these profiles from members that we take the time to answer. We also have a dedicated customer service team that is live on the phones for eight hours a day. If you have any questions, um, we're just very responsive and helpful. We want you folks to get the most out of your membership. And most of all, we want you to have the ability to fund the good works that you are doing out there in the world. So we try our best to make sure that you're using GrantStation to the best degree possible and that your questions don't just fall on deaf ears. And with that, does anyone have any closing comments? I just wanted to say uh, thank you for your time. Uh, a lot of you stayed with us throughout this extra question and answer section. Sorry, it went a little long, but uh, we have a lot to talk about. We usually do. And again, any further questions, like Kevin said, infocrenation.com. If you like the sound of my voice, take one of our webinars. You'll probably hear my voice again. Or and that's something we didn't even mention, something that we've been doing on a regular basis, based on who takes our state grant seeking survey, we turn around and make mission focus videos that are all about finding funding for a specific topic. So we have one on animal welfare, arts festivals, dental programs, faith-based organizations, food security, transitional housing for women, veteran housing, music, mental health service. All these videos are short form, just seven to 10 minutes, just me walking you through doing search after search after search. So these are available for you on our about page and it's our contact us and also our how to videos that will get you that information. All right. And then I just don't want to uh, leave this question go. It came right in at the end. Um, is the site um, accessible to folks who are perhaps blind. I did tell them, Jeremy, um, our webinars, you can have the closed captioning transcripts, also some of the videos. And also the site is very uh, text-based. There's not a lot of you know graphs and stuff like that. So it should be accessible to most web reader software. Is there anything else you'd, you'd like to add to that? Jeremy. Nope, that's that's very true. That's something we're always working on is making it more and more um, easy to use and easy to navigate. It currently is navigable, but we're always making improvements to make it even better and make it um, function better in all the different screen readers that are available out there. So if you are interested, you know, definitely uh, look around the site as it is without even being logged in. If that's not working for you, let us know. We'll be happy to see if we can figure out what will make it work better for you. We're really about trying to make this a good experience for everyone, especially if you have any kind of issues like that. Just let us know and we'll do our best to accommodate you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day and thanks for joining us. Oh, and don't forget $99. You get access to Grand Station February 13th and 14th. Thanks, Aretha. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody.